Bienvenue dans le podcast Chanel Connects. Welcome to Chanel Connects. Le podcast qui The podcast that brings together talents from film, art, dance and music for conversations about the future of culture. Chanel Connects donne la parole. Chanel Connects gives innovative artists the opportunity to talk about their creations and their journey in our ever-changing environment. Could you tell where my head was at when you found me? Me and you went to hell and back just to find peace. Pour cet épisode spécial de Chanel Connects, for this special episode of Chanel Connects, we are honored to speak with two talents of French cinema, directors Maimouna Ducoré and Audrey Duan. Maimouna Ducoré is a French director of Senegalese descent. Her short film Mama has won awards in the most prestigious international festivals. Her first feature film, Cuties, in 2020, was a great international success. Audrey Duan is a French director of Lebanese descent. Before becoming a filmmaker, she worked as a journalist and screenwriter. In 2021, her film Happening won the Golden Lion at the 17th Venice Film Festival. She is a member of the 50-50 Collective that promotes equality between women and men in the film industry. For this conversation, Maimouna Ducoré and Audrey Duan met in the studio in Paris. Although their careers are connected, this was the first time they talked to each other. C'est étrange parce que on vit euh, on vit à Paris et, et des noms circulent tant et si bien qu'au bout d'un moment. It's strange because we live in Paris and names are passed around so much that at some point I got the impression that we're close, especially female directors. We remember being both distant and close to each other at the same time. Because Memuna received the Alice Guy Prize for Cuties. She was then a member of the jury that awarded it to me. C'est drôle, j'avais l'impression de te connaître en fait. On a beaucoup de choses en commun. Exactement, et puis on s'était écrit. Exactly. It's funny. I felt like I actually knew you, and we also wrote to each other. When I saw your film, I wrote a little post, a message to tell you how much I liked your film. Well, we feel like we know each other, but without knowing each other. On a envie de se rencontrer, et puis ça tombe bien parce que ce matin. We wanted to meet each other, and that's good because this morning we can finally talk. Nous avons ensuite interrogé Maimouna et Audrey. We then asked Maimouna and Audrey about the importance of collaboration and its role in their creative process. Moi, je pense que ça fait euh, ça fait partie en tout cas de mon de mon processus de création. It is part of my creative process. I'm very much surrounded by other directors. I like to confront points of view. I always have the feeling that we come out richer, enriched by others' viewpoint, by their method of work. And even if it doesn't change our own processes, it allows us to examine them differently. I have the feeling that I still need that. Oui, euh, le fait de partager les expériences sharing experiences, positive or negative, makes you move forward. It's kind of obvious between us. Earlier, we started talking and people could not stop us because we have so many things to tell each other. Tout le monde avait du mal à nous arrêter parce qu'on a on a plein plein de choses à se dire et quand la première consigne c'est ne ne vous dites pas tout avant qu'on commence. When people have to tell you not to say everything before recording, there's obviously a connection. Nous avons interrogé Maimouna et Audrey sur l'un de leurs points communs. We asked Maimouna and Audrey about one of the things they have in common, which is that they did not study filmmaking and how it impacted their career. J'avoue que le cinéma, euh, il se résumait à, ma, à la télévision. Euh, cinéma was just on television in our small living rooms in Paris. I didn't go to the cinema. I was watching films on TV. That fascination came early for me, but I remember thinking it was impossible to make it. And as the years passed, I studied things that are totally unrelated to it. Biology, drama, and I was writing stories. I was trying to find myself. I wanted to be an actress, so I did theater when I was in university. And I thought that one day a door might open, but I didn't really believe it. It all really started in 2013. I participated in a screenwriting contest by accident. A friend almost forced me to do it, and I said I'd be incapable of directing something. I was writing, but I didn't really know how to do it. I'd never studied it. I didn't know how it worked. So I wrote this screenplay, which was inspired by my own life, as it often is. I sent it, then I forgot about it. Two months later, I got a call congratulating me, telling me I was nominated and I had two months to direct a film. So I had this huge dilemma because I had to take up my studies, a master's in environmental science. I had printed all the documents for my enrollment. 
That's when I received this call. I thought it was a sign of fate. I threw away the papers and I decided to make this film. I called friends who are directors, like, I need to make this film, what do I do? I had to look up shot list. I was learning everything. Two months later, I was watching on a screen images that came from my own head. I realized I could do it. I could tell stories. Des images qui viennent de ma tête et je me dis OK, j'en suis capable en fait. Je, je peux le faire, je peux raconter des histoires et voilà. En écoutant Maimouna, je me demandais si c'était un hasard. Is it normal for a woman not to project herself like this? When you grow up with very few female directors to look up to. Of course, there's Varda, Campion, but there is a lack of representation. Would you still let yourself dream about that? I always kept in mind that I should try open doors, even though I wasn't invited to do it. My first love is literature, yet I haven't studied it. I studied journalism and political science, wondering how to become an author. I didn't find the key, but I wondered if, on my own, reading books, I could get closer to a dream I didn't know how to approach. My family is not really artistic. How to get closer to your desires? The person I did this first step with was my best friend, Fatou Birama. We decided we wanted to write a book, an essay, about integration. We wrote it together, it was based on experience, and we were given a chance to get published. I told the publisher I was interested in publishing, and he let me be a publisher and work with new novelists. Therefore, I was trained to lead people to reach their dreams, their first book. Doing that, I learned how to structure a story. I thought my path was strange because I was trying different experiences. Journalist, head of a newspaper. Then I wrote for others, on TV and for movies. As if I was looking for a path. When I finally worked on a set, I realized all my experiences were linked. Being the head of a newspaper was managing different skills for one single goal. Helping novel writers helped me structure my writing. I realized I was heading towards a dream. I took the time to express. And things found a meaning more naturally than I had initially thought. I took the time to express. And that finally, the things found their sense, I would more naturally than what I had seen at the beginning. Audrey Diwan et Maimouna Doukoure ont été récompensés par des prix illustres. Although they came to filmmaking after having worked and studied in other circles, Audrey Diwan and Maimouna Doukoure have been rewarded with illustrious prizes. In 2021, Audrey won the Golden Lion at the Venice Film Festival. Maimouna, the award for Best Direction at Sundance in 2020. We asked them about the significance of these awards in their career as directors. Évidemment, ça met de la lumière et ça offre de la liberté. It shines a light on you and gives you freedom. We know a lot of directors who don't have a degree. So I always feel like we get asked these questions, having to justify yourself or defend a position. And I don't feel the need to do that. I agree with you. There are incredible, marvelous films that have not necessarily received any prize. I learned to savor it because at the beginning, I had made a short film called Maman, my first professional film, which did 200 festivals and won many prizes. And at the beginning, I remember that I was afraid that, by appreciating getting an award, maybe I was afraid that it would stop, that I wasn't legitimate, and that there was some kind of mechanism keeping me from appreciating recognition. So today, I let myself enjoy it. And I say to myself that there are film professionals, maybe even just five people, who liked my work. And as you say, it shines a light on you. That's why I make films, for them to be seen and shared, to touch the hearts of the public. If awards make them accessible, it's for the better. En plus du succès des réalisatrices aux cérémonies de remise, les comédiennes principales de Maimouna... In addition to their success as directors at award ceremonies, Maimouna and Audrey's lead actresses were celebrated and rewarded with acting awards. They talked to us about how they chose their talents and explain their process of working with these young actresses that they made famous. I keep in mind that cinema is in essence a collaborative art. I had a meeting with Anna Maria Bartolome. It was a wonderful talk. I knew that the actress and the film would be as one. It is the device of the film. She's in every shot and the camera slips into her breath. The casting was important. It always is. But considering this storytelling device, it's an even more impressive moment. Choosing an actress. 
I was sure when I met her that she was the right person. She had already been in films. I had asked my casting director to introduce me to young women who had already been in films because I knew that Laurent Tangy, the director of photography, would be 20 centimeters away from her most of the time and therefore in her shadow. And I wanted someone who was able to deal with that closeness and forget it, to be able to act. Je suis totalement d'accord avec ce que tu dis. En effet, le casting, pour moi, c'était... Euh... Enfin, je, je, je dis toujours, voilà, I totally de... agree with what you say. Indeed, for me, the casting is the most important part. When you look at a film, you can forgive approximations or weaknesses in the scenario, but in order to take the viewer by the hand and embark with them on a story emotionally, casting is important. I love the idea of revealing talents. Whether it's for my short film Mama, Cuties, or for my new film, each time it's actresses who have never acted. To find Fatia Yusuf, we auditioned 650 girls. It was an open casting throughout all of France, and I fell in love with her right away. She was the 650th one, so believe me when I say I was waiting for her. When I saw her, I started crying. I was sure I'd found her. And I like to train someone beyond their innate talent. It's crazy to think she might have never realized she had this talent. The most important part was to create a playground. It's about childhood. They were preteens, so I wanted to create confidence and a sense of family. We went on holidays together. It was awesome. We went to fairs, to the movies. They love McDonald's, so we went there every Friday night and we told each other stories. There was a ritual for them to get to know each other, then rehearsals and working on their bodies. I told them we were in a laboratory to look for a certain truth. My ultimate goal was for her to let go, and there was always a camera, even on holidays, for her to get used to being filmed. With social media being everywhere now, it was not that hard, but she had to feel that there would always be a camera filming her so she could let go, embody her character. And each character in Cuties is like an animal to me. The main character, Annie, starts as a kitten, then a cat, then a black panther. It helped me because we couldn't shoot in order. How can you explain to a young new actress that it's not shot in order? Using animals helped me. Yesterday you were a fragile kitty, now you're a panther. Right away, her body took a posture, her back got straight, she lifted her head up, her look changed, and it was magical. Our common point is to look for a story in the body. Absolutely. I like stories about the body. I like bodies to be the vector of a past, of psychology and emotions, and as much as possible, I like to do it without words. I was lucky because with Anna Maria, who's not the same age as the actresses you worked with, I didn't understand back then how lucky I was. But the shooting was postponed because of the first lockdown, and we were apart. With Anna Maria, we talked every other day, and one thing I learned is how much the time you spend together before shooting matters. During that time, we shared movies and books, and we developed a common language, a way of talking about the film we were creating through other films. Rosetta, Fish Tank. We had 15, 20 films, which for specific reasons, and being about the body, gave us a common language. The early conversations you have between you as an actress and a director matter just as much as what you create on set. Ces acteurs est certainement aussi important que ce qu'on va trouver dans l'instant. Complètement. La préparation, je suis d'accord, elle est totalement essentielle. Et absolutely, preparation is essential. I said it earlier, and confidence too, because my film denounces hypersexualization. It's really about the body, about dancing. So we had to work on rehearsing, talking about the actresses and their parents. Right from the start, I talked with a psychologist for the girls to understand why we were making a film, that I wasn't doing it on my own, but along with them. It's a collective work. Au fil de la conversation, les deux réalisatrices ont réfléchi. As the conversation continued, the two filmmakers reflected on the influence of this preparatory work on the shooting of their film. Je crois que j'ai lu des interviews de certains metteurs en scène de théâtre. I read reviews with stage directors, and I always think about troops. What is a troupe? How do they work together? 
I'm not fascinated with the myth of the omnipotent director. It's a myth we've granted more generously to male directors. This hierarchy, this pyramid, contradicts the idea of creating together. And it's important to say it. Everyone in the team determines whether the take will be good or not. I kept that in mind for happening, because it has long takes. So we needed all the actors to be in the moment, but also all the technicians. Everyone to be in Anne's head, the main character. When she turns her head, you need the cameraman to do the same movement at the same time, as if they were one person. So when she turns her head to look at the actor who just came in, the person in charge of the focus has to be in the moment. 30, 40, 50 people do the same movement at the same time. The idea that I'm the conductor and the only one in charge hides the fact that we all have to be in the moment, at the same time, and at the same place. I like the idea of being a conductor, of being in a collective, knowing that without them, we'll never get the take we want. jamais la prise que nous cherchons tous ensemble. J'adore ce que tu dis quand tu... Enfin, c'est comme si... Enfin, j'adore ce que tu dis, c'est un peu... I love what you're saying. It's all one singly body, and each function of this body needs the other ones to exist. We have to work together. I really see the actor at the center of everything. I wanted my actresses to be free. We prepare things beforehand, but on set, if you were supposed to get up, but you stay seated because you feel it that way, you can do that. Then we adapt. And I may be the director, but I only see other artists around me. Artists that I need to tell my story. I need my set to be a loving environment. For that, we have to say hello, respect each other, even the extras. Some directors don't say hello or anything. For me, it's essential to consider each person, extra or technician, as important. Even though they don't get paid the same. They matter just as much. If an extra doesn't do what they have to do, looks at the camera, or just isn't in the moment, it just doesn't work. If you start working and you've had your hot tea, everything matters. So I take my time to show consideration to everyone. It's the job of the director to show that this is important. If the director shows that everyone matters, everyone will feel important. If they create a hierarchy, it's up to them to avoid that. Don't you think people confuse consideration with authority? Just because everyone realizes they're important, which is true, doesn't mean the director has no authority. It's absurd. If something changes with the new generations, it's our attitude towards work. And knowing cinema is a collective work in a different way. L'accueil critique des films de Maimouna et Audrey the reviews for Maimouna and Audrey's films praise the sensitivity with which they approach the condition of women in different periods. We then asked them to talk about political dimensions in their work. Alors moi, j'ai fait des études de sciences politiques à la base, et euh, j'ai toujours le sentiment que je ne cherche jamais. À faire... I studied political science, and I never feel like I'm making a political film, but it will become one naturally. Maybe in a selfish way, I always look for subjects I feel strongly about. My adaptation of an Annie or No book comes from the admiration I have for her work. Her work made me, intellectually speaking. It has a political dimension, but not only a feminist one. She moved along the social ladder. She tells this social story. Being political isn't just about feminism. It's important to talk about that, but we shouldn't be limited to that. While we were promoting the film, I felt strongly about the female gaze. I'm a filmmaker making a film about a young woman, and it's about illegal abortions. Everything points to my point of view being that of a woman. At first, I was happy that people talked about the female gaze, a new word that was rarely discussed. But then I started to feel that I was becoming trapped in it. My point of view was only considered through the lens of my gender and not through its complexity. Your point of view is the result of your story and your love for cinema, of many things, not only your gender. I campaign for people to acknowledge the complexity of such a point of view and why it's important to hear women's point of view. But I also want to say it's important not to consider a given point of view as male or female, which would mean that any woman would have made the same film. It's absurd to think gender can define everything. Pour rebondir sur ce que tu dis, 
je, je te rejoins totalement sur cette... Euh, I cette totally agree about being trapped, put in a box, especially about femininity. For me, there's also the issue of skin color, the fact that I'm black. I've always known that France has several genres, just like anywhere else. You have comedies, drama, police films, but there is another genre that we call diversity. I'm saying that because I remember when my film was coming out with the distributors, we would ask ourselves, what are other films made by black people? I'm telling it like it is. Even though the films were not the same genre and didn't deal with the same subjects, but two films may come out at the same time, both made by black filmmakers. And it's complicated to have two at the same time. You've reached the quota. So I agree with you. My desire as a filmmaker is for my work to be seen as just a film, as French cinema, and for genres to be just that, because the genre of diversity or femininity is not a thing. And finally, it is something much more universal. When I wrote Cuties, I didn't want to make a political film. The story is something quite personal, in fact. It brings back the little girl in me, takes me back to my childhood, to the period when I rejected my femininity. Not because I had gender dysphoria or anything, but because the female condition seemed to me to be a kind of prison. When I was 10 years old, I dreamt of becoming a boy, for a simple reason. Around me, I saw so much injustice towards women. There was a time when there were many forced marriages around me. Many women were suffering from polygamy. I was witnessing that. It, it's difficult because women's bodies are still subject to debate. It being debated made me think it was going to be complicated to be a girl. It's too hard. In the end, that's all right. I'm happy to be a woman. But I have this question, how to become a woman when you're torn between your Senegalese culture and your French culture, which both made me. I need to take apart something that was visceral for me. It's mainly a story. It's not a pamphlet. It's a story that needed to exist, a character I wanted people to relate to. I wanted people to become a 11-year-old girl, whether they're 70-year-old men or a 45-year-old woman. I wanted them to forget everything and start living this girl's life, dance with her, put themselves in her shoes. After the end of the film, we'll think... I think that through her, you talk about the generations. Seeing cuties, I related to this young girl, but also saw mothers, different generations, bodies that are prisons. Listening to you, I think activism is mainly speaking up. Everything you say was unheard of. Women's stories have long remained untold, so when you finally say it and lift the veil, after happening, many men told me they weren't aware of all that. It's very interesting because it makes people think less in black and white terms. Many men didn't help their wives at the time when they lived through the 60s in France because they didn't know. Yes, and just being in our place. I'm talking about being black as well. As a filmmaker, knowing that in French cinema, no one can say more than two names of black filmmakers, even outside of France. In spite of myself, this becomes political. Just telling these stories that have never been told putting them out there in the sincerest way possible, it becomes political whether we like it or not. The two filmmakers traveled a lot to promote their films, and we talked about the reactions they received abroad. With Cuties, we made the world premiere of the film at the Sundance Film Festival in the U.S. It won the award for Best Director there, and it went very well. It was quite crazy, in fact, because Sundance is 10 screenings, each with four or 500 people. And it was interesting to talk with people who came from all over the world and people from Utah who are light years away from me culturally and who relate in certain ways because they can be Mormons, for example. And polygamy is something that speaks to them. I found that quite funny. And then, obviously, the questions that I raise on femininity, the construction of femininity, they related to that because in the film, I talk about these young girls who identify with videos that they see on the Internet. These videos, in general, come from an American culture. Cuties is universal, so people related to it everywhere it's been shown. I asked myself before showing it. When we showed the film in Venice, we had hardly shown the film before. So I was very fragile at the moment because I was wondering, 
I tend to make films for myself. And I was wondering who I had made the film for. Did I make it for women who had experienced this period and who would do a rereading of this moment, of this history? Did I make it for young women who can identify with this journey and find a contemporary echo? Did I make it for other audiences? Will men slip into the skin of this young woman? Is this a good way to question the issue of gender? And then at the end, I realized I'd made this film to show it to people who don't agree with me. The film is about this particular young woman's journey. But despite not being about one single subject, it's also about illegal abortions. How do we show the film to people who are against abortion when it is so obvious that the film takes a stance? Even if I always try not to make it a moral issue, it still raises that issue. I've had some people, after the film, telling me they were against abortion. It was fascinating because if you decide not to be so defensive, you can discuss. Ask yourself why you are against abortion. And it was people of different ages. I met a very young man who said he was religious, Catholic, grew up in a religion and couldn't imagine being a woman having an abortion. It let me reframe the issue and identify why people are against it. And for these people to understand why we want to be free. The most interesting discussions after the showings were with these people. How can we talk despite disagreeing completely? I have a question. Did you show the film in a place where abortion is illegal? It's coming up. For example, the film has been bought in Poland, and it's exciting to see how it will be received. I think the natural movement of the film will be to open its arms to those who agree with me. But that doesn't solve the problem. Even if you're in a place where abortion is banned, it can generate protests. There may be debates, but that doesn't solve the problem of how to show it to people who don't agree. So we ask ourselves, if I go to Poland, what is the best device that would show us how a work resonates, how it's talked about, how to open the doors you talked about? Before saying goodbye, Maimona and Audrey told us about their future projects. Je suis en montage de mon nouveau film, uh, mon, mon nouveau long métrage. I am editing my new film, and I cannot tell you much about it right now. Um, I can only tell you that it is about a 15-year-old who... It was an open casting, so it's a new talent, and I can't wait for people to see it. <laughs> I can't wait. And it's a film that I connect with because it's about hope, about a dream you can't realize. But the character is determined. I love obsessive characters who fight no matter what to reach their goals. I can't wait to be able to tell you more and to show it to you, but it's coming out soon. As for me, I'm the co-screenwriter with another filmmaker of my next film. And it's funny because it's only my third film and I realize I have motifs. I could say that it being about the body is one of my obsessions. I work a lot around this subject. Where can I take this exploration of the body? How far can I go telling other stories without making the same film using different cinematic devices? Keeping in mind that from film to film, we gain more freedom. It must be very interesting to work with another woman, a female filmmaker, and I totally agree with you. There's one thing I want to add about my film. It's that it's really about fighting against social determinism, breaking those barriers that you want to get rid of, turning them into the belief that things are possible. Into material for fiction. Exactly. Nobody will know if we don't say it, but we'll leave the studio and have a coffee again. <laughs> With pleasure. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this episode of Chanel Connects. You can find the series on the Chanel website or on all podcast platforms. You can discover other conversations of innovative artists to whom Chanel Connects has chosen to give a chance to speak. See you soon. <laughs>